वेलकम बैक टू द अमेजिंग चैनल पी डब्ल्यू इंग्लिश आई होप यू ऑल आर गुड एंड यू आर ऑलरेडी कैचिंग अप विद द सीरीज बेसिक्स ऑफ बायोलॉजी एंड बेसिक्स ऑफ ऑल द सब्जेक्ट्स टुडे टॉपिक इज गोइंग टू बी हार्ट एंड इट्स फंक्शंस लेट मी टेल यू वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द बेसिक्स ऑफ ग्लैंड्स व्हाट आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ग्लैंड्स इन द बॉडी व्हाट इज देयर फंक्शन देन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट न्यूट्रिशन amoeba and what are the different steps of nutrition we have also talked about difference between breathing and respiration right considering your chapter life processes all the topics you are going to study will be related to your particular chapter life processes so we have considered the same chapter and these are the basics from that chapter only okay it is going to help both the students from class 9th and 10th because biology is something that every human should know at least you should know about their body and at least the basics right so everybody should know what is heart how it works moving ahead okay i hope you know my name my name is upasna mongia your biology educator let us start what we are going to discuss today today we are going to discuss the basic of the human heart as i told you i am going to tell you the basic structure of heart and then what are arteries veins and capillaries you must have heard of these terms today you are going to comprehend that what are the differences between these and how it works so here is the beautiful heart in front of you it is pumping yes if you are preparing or wish to become a doctor or if you are preparing for the neat exam this is what you are going to encounter when you open up the chest of a person and finds this amazing and the most um, we can say uh, the working of heart starts the earliest and it keeps on working until the last so this is the organ which is having the longest duration basically so obviously i am not going to study this way because it is going to be very complicated so how do we study the structure of heart we divide it into simple parts okay i am going to make an easy diagram for you and i will also tell you that how we can simplify it theek okay? hai there are basically four chambers in heart four chambers in heart okay now understand the size of your heart is going to be the size of your fist this is known as fist right so the size will be this much only and when you are going to open it up you will find four chambers in heart chambers are like rooms in our heart let me draw those rooms for you let's call it the first room let's let's call it the second room yes these are the rooms these are present on the upper floor so we will call it auricles or atria also atria is plural atrium is singular auricle is singular auricles are plural so you are going to find both the terms in different books clear now let's come to second floor on second floor also we have two chambers two rooms this one and see another one we call it ventricles ventricles upar wale auricles and the lower one are known as ventricles now let's give a nice covering to it let's give a nice covering to it i am keeping the diagram very simple you already know how complicated it is see so you somewhat got the idea this is the diagram you are going to use in your notebooks in your examination because we cannot draw it like this every time got it now you know there are two chambers B below chambers are known as ventricles now one thing the blood always and always enter in auricles what did i just say the blood always enters from the auricles there is no direct connection to enter into the ventricles it means you can always come to the upper flow never to the lower flow you all this is the basement let's just say this is the base basement and this is the ground floor so you always enter the house uh, on the ground floor right and then you go to the basement got it fine one more thing always the left and right side of the heart is separated there 
there is an imaginary partition between left and right side of the heart so if your heart is placed in the chest uh, this chest cavity or the thoracic cavity we call it so here one is divided into the left side and one is divided into the right side let me tell you one more important thing let's just take a blank slide over here so that i can make a nice diagram again i'm going to show you the position of the heart again this is your windpipe this is your windpipe or trachea we have discussed it in the previous chapter then here is the lung first and the second one do you see i have intentionally made a fold in the left side of the lung this is the left side this is the right side so yes we always say that our heart is located on the left side of the body so this is actually where the lungs uh, heart is placed just below the lungs to the left side let me draw this cute heart for you so this is the right location we call it cardiac notch because of this the size of the left lung is smaller in comparison to the right one and now you understood why because it has an area known as cardiac notch just some basics i am telling you where it is located below the lungs left lung is smaller as compared to the right lungs fine let's get back to the heart only as i just told you left and right side is divided and why it is divided basically by division by partition i mean that left uh, blood from the left side will never go directly to the right side there is no connection that you can cross these rooms you can never enter from the left auricle to the right auricle and never from right to left this is never going to happen okay since it is not going to happen let's just erase it same is with ventricles bachcha the blood from left ventricle will never enter the right ventricle so it means the blood can never grow cross the pass like this moving ahead moving ahead let me tell you more about heart now since you already know the chambers are divided one more thing there are two terms we are going to use oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood now what do you mean by oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so basically there is a blood which has more oxygen concentration inside it we call it oxygenated there is a blood which has more carbon dioxide concentration inside it as compared to oxygen carbon dioxide is more we call it deoxygenated blood d o x y g e n a t e d deoxygenated blood so right now obviously both the types of bloods are flowing inside us but if we have to separate the terms oxygenated one with more oxygen and deoxygenated one with more carbon dioxide i will get back to structure of heart but before that let us understand what are arteries veins and capillaries all right so let us understand in a very simple way you are under uh, you can imagine that our body is just like a house our body is just like a house let us imagine and every house has a motor that transports water from first floor to second floor and vice versa same way our heart is the motor in our body we are the house and ha our heart is the motor now what does a typical motor do it transports water from different floors to different rooms and all same way our heart is pumping blood to different cells of the body it is responsible for sending blood to my brain to my legs to my left arm to my right arm to the back side to the dorsal side everywhere right so same way heart is working inside us now how is the water in the house transported or delivered inside pipes right pipes of different sizes same way we have pipes in our body but the difference is that those pipes are very very small tube like structures and quite flexible we gave the name blood vessels what are those pipe like structures called 
blood vessels not all the pipes could be same in the house same way not all the blood vessels could be same in us so we have divided it into three types arteries veins and third one will be capillaries i am going to differentiate between these three very easy difference arteries arteries are like group of tubes or vessels uh, which have taken a vow that they are always going to transport oxygenated blood always so inside arteries or the pipes named arteries you are always going to the find the blood which has more oxygen inside it veins are working opposite since arteries have already taken a vow and doing their work veins have decided that they are going to transport deoxygenated blood so let me write down co2 rich blood then what about capillaries see arteries and veins are thicker pipes and there are areas in our body where arteries and veins could not enter because of their size so capillaries are the thinner versions of both thin arteries like very extremely thin arteries and extremely thin veins could be called as capillaries so yes capillaries for arteries are known as arterioles and capillaries for veins are known as venules you can skip these term i am not counting these terms as basics but since i was telling you everything you have the idea now capillaries you must know that capillaries are the thinner versions of both the pipes arteries and veins also do not use the word pipe in your answer sheets it is more of a layman language to make you understand better you will be using the term blood vessel now here the beautiful jeev the beautiful animation in front of you can you guess what it is bacha it is artery it is any artery we don't know the name of it but this is how the blood flows inside an artery which type of blood it must be oxygenated blood so arteries carry pure blood from heart to all parts of the body by pure it means carrying oxygen they are thick walled and do not have valves now one more thing that you are going to uh, remember about uh, rem one second one second one second i need one more blank slide bachcha let's add one more okay we were talking about arteries back to it arteries are thicker arteries are thicker pipes see actually the walls of artery are thick so can i make it something like this inside version is also visible to you okay just just with the help of this circle you can have a picture that the diameter of the pipe is very thick the walls of the pipe are thick it will be more clear when i will draw a vein here this is a vein all right now see the comparison the walls of the vein are very thin let me write down here thick wall and here i can write down thin wall so this is very important and major difference between artery and vein here we are dealing with artery and here we are dealing with a vein so this is the first basic difference arteries have thick walls and veins have thin walls what else what are what are other differences the inside space is known as lumen l u m e n the inside space is known as lumen so based on lumen can you tell me another difference the inside space is lumen lumen is opposite right because of the thicker walls lumen is going to be narrow inside an artery but in veins lumen is wide very simple differences don't you think and one more difference you already know arteries are going to transport oxygenated blood and veins are going to transport carbon dioxide related blood which has more carbon dioxide concentration so these are the major differences now one thing 
arteries are directly connected to heart of the body their major role is let me draw the heart for you let's just say this is the heart arteries are responsible for taking the blood away from the heart because heart will always carry oxygenated blood bachcho so <coughs> this side this is the left side of the heart here oxygenated blood travels only to the left side only oxygenated blood travels i will you will get to know more about it in your main lecture just try to listen the basics that i am going to tell you left side of the heart has the oxygenated blood and it is the duty of any artery or the arteries to take the oxygenated blood away from the heart since away starts from a and artery also starts from a you can use it as a trick to keep it in your head that arteries always take the blood away from the heart and which type of blood it is oxygenated talking about because see one more point that i'm going to mention heart is always pumping blood right like that continuously it is never going to stop it means it is exerting a lot of pressure on its outer side obviously something is continuously pumping it means it is pressurizing the outer sides of the walls so because of high pressure arteries have thick walls see everything is related it has to undergo it has to deal with all the pressure from the heart that is why arteries are thick walled whereas if i talk about any vein vein is responsible for bringing the blood inside the heart it means these are not directly connected and they don't have to bear all the heart pressure so less pressure with less pressure the blood travels inside the vein and with high pressure blood travels inside the heart you got the pumping thing na that because of pumping and direct connection of heart and arteries veins are not so thin and walls of arteries are thicker you got the point fine now because of less pressure in veins sometimes blood wants to make a reverse see this is let's just say this is the right way or right path for blood to travel but since the pressure is not that high sometimes blood can take a back it can come to the back side or take the opposite direction which can create a jerk we cannot let that happen in the body that is why veins have valves inside them now these valves these are just door like structures the swiping doors so it is present like this once uh, the blood has to go these walls will open once they have crossed the path walls will close like this so once the walls are closed even if the blood tries to take a back there is no option because the walls are or the gates are already closed so these are going to work as gates once blood has crossed its path there is no chance of coming back so this is again one more difference between arteries and veins that walls are present inside the veins and not in arteries because of the pressure capillaries now you know are the thinner versions of both so that is only you have to memorize for now about arteries capillaries and veins i wanted to show you about vein also see yes veins carry impure blood impure blood will come from the cells of the body and with impure it simply means with more carbon dioxide so that extra carbon dioxide inside the blood is making it impure cells create a lot of waste all that waste will enter inside the blood now you will call that blood deoxygenated deoxygenated blood will come to the heart with the help of veins these door like structures are known as walls which does not allow the back flow of the blood that's it now in your see these are the capillaries inside the capillaries only exchange of gases takes place now understand this let's say this is an artery and this is a vein for getting ki abhi there are differences in the structures uh, let us understand a and v okay now these pipes 
will be narrowed and pipes of veins venules is the right term but to keep things simple we are not using those terms here the exchange of gases will take place see if venules want to give their carbon dioxide outside and arteries want to transport their oxygen so this is what you call exchange of gases that exchange of gases takes place in the capillaries so the basics of arteries veins are, and capillaries must be clear the structural differences are going to help you in your main lecture you are going to talk about double circulation in human heart here you can clearly see the working and the pumping heart let's try locating four chambers see lower chambers or ventricles are easily visible to you and this tissue that is separating both the ventricles is known as septum it is going to keep both the ventricles separated both the chambers separated upper chambers must be here not completely visible to us in this gif but still here you can locate upper chambers which we call arteries as i told you if we call this as the lef left side and this as the right side always oxygenated blood will enter from here it will first enter into the left atrium and then it will pass down to left ventricle and from left ventricle it will leave the heart because there is no way else to go it will never cross the right side it will always remain to the left side so the blood comes from lungs because here we are talking about oxygenated blood you always inhale oxy uh, oxygen we inhale oxygen this oxygen reaches the lungs from lungs it goes to the heart to the left atrium and then to the left ventricle and then to the body cells because eventually they need oxygen na so all the oxygen will be transported then when body cells will be done with their chemical reactions and all that carbon dioxide waste is produced the carbon dioxide waste will enter inside the blood again and now we will call it deoxygenated blood that deoxygenated blood will come to the right side first to the right atrium then to the right ventricle that simple and then back to lungs so that we can exhale carbon dioxide now you see these arrows here comes the work of the blood vessels when it comes to oxygenated blood which type of blood vessels are going to participate arteries is the right answer if you are thinking and then if i talk about deoxygenated blood when it when it comes to the right side then veins are working but there is an exception that you should remember since the group of arteries have taken a vow that they are always going to transport oxygenated blood we can say that there is a cheater in their group who cheats on them and transports deoxygenated blood an artery but still carrying deoxygenated blood there is also a cheater in the group of veins since all the veins have taken a vow that they are going to transport deoxygenated blood one vein turns out to be a cheater and it starts carrying oxygenated blood so for the cheater this is just to memorize do not write it in your examination so the right term will be pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein these are the exceptions pulmonary artery is carrying oxygenated blood and pulmonary sorry pulmonary artery is carrying deoxygenated blood and pulmonary vein is carrying oxygenated blood so these uh these basics or facts that i have told you are going to help you a lot in your main chapter in your transportation topic of life processes so that was all the basic i hope you understood it soon i'm going to start another class we have already studied about human heart so thank you so much soon i will come again with more basics that is going to help you hope you are enjoying the uh, series back to basics and these series or sessions or lectures are helping you in your main lecture so i will see you again very soon till then take care of yourself